There are hundreds of billions of possible decks any player can create in Clash Royale. And as of December of 2022, there are 109 different cards for players to build an 8 card deck from. Obviously with so many different combinations, certain decks would rise above others. Most popular decks in Clash Royale phase out of the meta eventually. Some of the older popular meta decks like P.E.K.K.A. Double Prince or Three Musketeers Battle Ram haven't been relevant in years. This is because Supercell wants to keep the game fresh by nerfing or reworking cards in popular decks, which makes room for new metas to arise. Very few decks have stood the test of time, and one of these decks is famously known as Hog 2.6. Hog 2.6 has mostly consisted of these 8 cards averaging to 2.6 elixir. You may occasionally see people sub in a different spirit for the ice spirit or knight for the ice golem, but this is the OG variation and the version most 2.6 players choose to play. Now, Hog 2.6 is probably the most controversial deck in the history of Clash Royale. Although other decks may have been more overall hated at their peak, those decks are often nerfed and forgotten about. Hog 2.6 has remained relevant for years, so it's always on people's minds. If you play Clash Royale at all nowadays, you probably go against at least a couple of Hog 2.6 players a week. Because this deck never goes away, you will always see complaints about this deck. If you go anywhere where there's discussion about this deck, you'll always see arguments devolving into whether or not this deck needs a buff or a nerf, or if it's high skill or low skill. Every Clash Royale player has their opinion on this deck, and it doesn't seem like it will ever go away. So in this video, I will be discussing the history of Hog 2.6, why players hate it so much, why the skill level of this deck is often argued about, and why 2.6 has remained relevant since its existence. So when did 2.6 come into existence? You can't really release a deck. Players have to just figure it out for themselves. When the game first came out, only 5 of the 8 cards required for 2.6 were actually in the game, but even before 2.6 was a possible deck to craft, you immediately saw some of the synergies of the cards that were in the game already. One of the earliest popular meta decks was called Trifecto, which included the Hog Rider, Musketeer, and the Valkyrie. Since Ice Golem wasn't in the game yet, Valkyrie filled that role. There were a lot of variations with Trifecta, but it wouldn't be considered a Trifecta deck unless it had these three cards in it. The combo also often had Poison or Fireball as well as the Elixir Collector. This deck on screen is known to be the OG Trifecta. As you can see, it already had most of the cards that were in 2.6 in the game at the time in this deck. It was clear that the general archetype of Hog Rider has always existed. This was Hog Cycle in its earliest form. Skeletons were the only one elixir card, and elixir pump was a way to generate more elixir to place cards faster. Both skeletons and elixir pump were miles stronger than they are today, which goes to show the power of the deck then. Hall Rider was a very unique archetype at the time because most other archetypes simply involved building a big push. Hog Rider defied this. There was no log bait, no graveyard, no real hogs, or ram rider, so this kind of playstyle was very unique to Hog Rider, which made it very appealing. For the first few months of the game's history as well, the Hog Rider had a faster hit speed and dealt more damage, making it overall stronger than it is today. Hog Rider certainly wasn't more of a niche win condition like it is today. It was THE prominent win condition having high usage rates, of which I wish I could show you, but finding usage rates from 2016 is almost impossible. The best I could find was a chart from May of 2016 that a Reddit user made compiling up data from people on Reddit collecting data from over 2,000 matches saying 43% of all decks had Hog Rider. 2016 was truly a different time. This is notable because it compares it directly to the Royal Giant which had recently received a huge buff and this was the first month of the toxic Royal Giant meta that had been swarming the game. I will note that win rates were practically irrelevant because there were no challenges yet and all cards hovered around 50% on ladder and even does to this day. Because, well, if you lose, it becomes easier to win the next game. This is why win rates weren't really considered back then. This isn't a video covering the history of Hog Rider specifically though, so now let's talk about how 2.6 was starting to form throughout 2016. On July 4th, 2016, an update came to Clash Royale which added both the Ice Spirit and the Log. The Ice Spirit was especially notable because now another one elixir card was added to the game which meant skeletons would have some competition. Skeletons were good in Clash Royale not just because of the value of the card, but because it was so easy to cycle. Now players had another option for this psychability. Because all legendaries were extremely hard to upgrade at the time, and because Log was absolute garbage when it first came out, it didn't see a lot of light in the game at first. 
However, because Ice Spirit was another one elixir card and Hog Rider thrives with being paired with cycle cards, it instantly made its way into a lot of Hog Rider decks. However, most of these decks used Ice Spirit as a replacement to Skeletons, not using Skeletons with the Ice Spirits. Having two one elixir cards in the same deck for many players would just make the deck too weak as there wouldn't be enough strength in the deck to take care of big pushes. Finally, on October 14th, 2016, the final piece of the puzzle would be placed. The Ice Golem would be added to Clash Royale, meaning Hog Rider 2.6 was finally possible to create. Like with the Ice Spirit, the Ice Golem was instantly being used in Hog Rider decks. Being a cheap card, it was very appealing because Hog Rider always worked best with cheaper cards. This card being nothing but basically a mini tank, it was a great synergizer to Hog Rider. Even though it couldn't take out skeletons at the time, it was too less elixir than Valkyrie and could absorb a lot of damage allowing the Hog Rider to get extra hits. Despite my tireless efforts of searching, I could not find a single video of Hog Rider 2.6 existing in 2016. The earliest video I could find was on January 12th, 2017 on the Clash with Ash YouTube channel being advertised as the new trifecta, as the Valkyrie who was part of the iconic trio was being replaced with the Ice Golem. This deck also removed the Elixir Pump entirely in favor of having both one Elixir cards in the deck. However, this deck actually isn't officially 2.6. It had 7 of the 8 cards 2.6 had, but one card was replaced. This was the log for the Zap spell. But this actually makes a lot of sense when you think about the context at this time. Back in 2016 and early 2017, Zap dealt more damage than it does today, which meant it could kill things like Goblin Barrels. Goblin Gang and Dark Goblin also weren't in the game yet, and Skeleton Army was still pretty common. Zap was just the better choice. Not to mention that Zat was a common and Log was a legendary, meaning leveling up the Zat was far easier, especially back in 2016 to 2017 since legendaries were a nightmare to obtain. To give you an idea of just how difficult it was, know that even top ranked players were pushing to top spots with only level 4 legendaries when the max was 5. This deck was revolutionary and showed off ways to play never quite before seen. Being able to defend such massive pushes with just a few cheap cards really showed showcase the power of this deck. Just to give you some further perspective, 6 of the 8 cards were in stronger states than they are today, with Cannon and Musketeer having some better stats and some worse stats than today. This deck was shown off relying on cycling Hog Rider as much as possible and defending massive pushes with very cheap cards. It was almost surreal to see how such cheap cards could defend against such massive pushes. These cheap defenses would allow for easy positive elixir trades allowing the player to place as many Hog Riders as they could. If in any situation where a Hog Rider was having too much trouble making it to the tower, the strategy was simply to spell cycle. This was a much more viable strategy in 2017 because all spells did 40% of their damage to the crown tower rather than today where they only do 30%. A lot of the power in this deck was also attributed to the musketeer. You had to place the musketeer the farthest you could from all impending danger so you could squeeze as much value as you could out of her. Part of the strategy of playing 2.6 was getting much more value out of the musketeer than the game ever would have intended. You also had to make sure never to place her too close to cannon so that opponents would never be able to take both of them out with a single spell. Every card in this deck had a very specific purpose that was important to know. It required so much knowledge of the interactions and knowing where to place which card and at what time. Especially not having a big damage dealer, having to rely so much on cards like Musketeer so heavily to take care of golem pushes was very unprecedented. It didn't feel like this deck should have worked, but it just did. Fast forward a month into the future, in February of 2017, Zap had received a nerf so that it could no longer kill Stab Goblins. With Goblin Gang on the horizon and the new meta that would follow it, Zap would no longer be a viable option for this new variation of Trifecta. It was time to bring in the log. The oldest version of Hog 2.6 with all 8 cards being present was on February 13th, 2017 in another Clash with Ash video with a person named Sushi Pepe showing this deck off. Ash's entire channel is pretty much the hub to where pro players go to show off their deck to a large audience, so it makes sense the earliest gameplay of these decks is found on his channel. This deck was likely played earlier, even if it isn't recorded on video, but this still gives a general time frame as to when the deck was rising in popularity. I won't bother going over this one too much because I mainly already discussed how the deck was meant to be played and the log was just a substitute to Zap. With the Zap nerf, log to many players was the best option in this deck, although Zap with Hog Rider was still commonly used. However, Log would become a firm staple with the meta that would arise only a few weeks later.
On February 24th, 2017, the Goblin Gang would be released, and as soon as this card was released, people would begin experimenting with a new archetype called Logbait, a deck that was solely determined on overwhelming the opponent with cheap cards that would die to log. Although these cards could be taken out by themselves very easily, having all of them combined into one deck allowed for a way to play where the opponent couldn't possibly use their spell on all of them, which allowed for this deck to thrive thanks to the new Goblin Gang. Since Zap could no longer kill Stab Goblins or Princess when the log could, Log was necessary as an answer to these cards as they were all prominent in the meta and Zap just couldn't deal with it. Even though Logbait would fluctuate in the meta over time, these cards called for Hog 2.6 players to always be ready by having the Log on hand. Since a big strategy in Hog 2.6 was spell cycling as well, Log worked better than Zap in this aspect too because not only could you use it on perhaps say a Princess at the Bridge and also chipping the tower, but it also did more damage to the tower than a Zap did. Back then, the log not only dealt 4% more damage than it does today, but also did twice the amount of damage to crown towers being 40% of its damage whereas today it's only 20%. Zat would phase out entirely from 2.6 as players learn to adapt without it and the log would find a permanent spot in this archetype. Now I'm not going to go over the balance changes for all 8 of the cards in the future and explain how each of them influenced 2.6, but I will say that most of these cards were never that game breaking and it was difficult justifying nerfing them for much of their history because they never showed exorbitantly high use in win rates except for some brief periods. Skeletons did actually become very popular which made them nerfed down to 3 once again, but even at 3 the card remained strong and nerfing a card like this was almost impossible because the Skeleton Troop was prominent in so many other cards that ranged from a variety of power levels. Touching Skeletons would require reworks of so many other cards so it really just wasn't worth it. Log and Fireball had high use in win rates for a very long time and received very light nerfs over their lifespan despite their power which made them continue to thrive at high use in win rates. Log, Fireball, Hog Rider, Ice Golem, Skeletons, and Ice Spirit would all receive nerfs in 2017. The Fireball and the Log would get Crown Tower reduction nerfs making cycling them a less effective strategy. The Ice Spirit and Ice Golem nerfs made it so they wouldn't freeze troops for as long and the overall power of the Hog Rider was directly toned down. A lot of people had been calling for a Hog Rider nerf for most of 2017, but what I think finally got Supercell to give in to nerfing it was the Hog X NATO starting to become a very popular meta combo. Now you would expect with so many nerfs to this deck that it would slowly phase out of the meta or at least evolve to something else, but of course it never did. Hog 2.6 would remain relevant all through 2018. Back here again with my favorite deck in the game right now, it is 2.6 Hog Rider and 2019. I'm going to do 2.6 Hog Cycle deck and you get the idea idea, it was clear that this deck was not going anywhere. The problem with Hog 2.6 is that the deck was essentially nerf proof. Although there have been exceptions to what I'm about to say, for the majority of 2018 to 2022, Hog Rider, Musketeer, and Cannon have had below average use in win rates and were practically only viable in this one specific deck. And the other 5 cards were either about average in terms of strength or just non-oppressive cards Supercell didn't find worth balancing. You can't nerf a card if it has a below average use in win rate just because it's dominant in one specific deck. This kind of situation is nothing new where a card is only viable in one deck, but this deck has had several cards that were only viable in this one deck. In modern day, these cards actually have gotten a lot better being viable outside of Hog 2.6, but this issue was still a problem for years. Now the truth is, Hong 2.6 never really remained dominant. The deck did sort of phase out, and although this deck is still popular, it wasn't constantly crushing the top of ladder or dominating challenges with a massive win rate. It was a fairly niche deck for a long time. However, many players found this deck to be a very challenging deck to play, but very rewarding. There are a lot of skillful plays you can pull off with this deck and there has always been a lot of potential. It does require a unique style of play that can be nice to try out and if you can play perfectly, it really can shut down just about anything even in this day and age. I have seen unfathomable things that players have done with just 3 skeletons and a cannon and it really does feel like magic sometimes. The win rate of this deck can be attributed at least partly due to players just not being great with the deck, but the meta has certainly grown to be much more complex to a point where Hog 2.6 players are always facing new challenges. Nowadays, even with the Phoenix Monk meta, Hog 2.6 has about a 1.3% usage rate in Clash Royale which does sound low, but remember that this isn't a card, this is an entire deck. Deck. Remember that there are technically billions of possible decks you can play while only able to play 109 cards. So Hog 2.6 making 
up 1.3% of them is still pretty significant. This deck right now has about a 48% win rate and is still winning Grand and Classic challenges every single day. So now, let's discuss why this deck is so hated. Everyone has an opinion on Hog 2.6, and most are not afraid to express it. There is a variety of reasons, and I can definitely speak from personal experience. First off is probably the biggest reason, the repetitiveness of it. This deck requires such a specific way to play to deal with certain archetypes that players will often defend with the exact same formation every single time you play anything. You may think that makes it predictable, which should allow for counterplay, but that brings us to the next reason, lack of counterplay. Oftentimes with many archetypes, there's simply nothing you can do. If the Hog 2.6 players knows what they're doing and doesn't make a mistake, it can literally be impossible to break through. Since part of this deck's strategy is cycling spells, if they do that, you can't do anything about it. Even if the 2.6 player throws a fireball at nothing, that 4 elixir advantage is not going to help you when the 2.6 player can counter your golem with 3 skeletons and a cannon. Also, since this deck is able to counter practically anything for a very cheap elixir cost, you can't really ignore the Hog Rider because then all the player has to do is defend, 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 and suddenly you are playing an uphill battle. This deck relies on mostly just getting chip damage, whether it's with the Hog Rider, the Ice Spirit, or the spells. Basically, this means all the player is looking for is just one Hog Rider hit on the tower at a time. The goal is to chip away at you for the entire game and then spell cycle you to finish, and it is a long process. Almost any time you see this deck, it drags out the entire game into overtime because it's overly defensive and weak on the offense. Defensive playstyles are often very much hated in Clash Royale and historically have always been. You always have to play perfectly to ensure that the Hog Rider does not even get a single hit on your tower because one hit can really be the difference between winning and losing. Then after all is said and done, and you've wasted 5 minutes of your life to lose because your tower had 34 HP less than their tower after they threw a fireball at the last second, they'll post a replay of your battle to reddit and say with a completely serious tone that they have more skill than you. These are the reasons many players hate 2.6, and there are decks that share this similar core frustration. Longbait and Expo are hated for the same reasons 2.6 is hated. Overly defensive decks that never seem to phase out of the meta where the goal is to chip away at you for 5 minutes relying on spell cycling if they can't connect to your tower. Spell cycling is most players least favorite way to lose because there's absolutely nothing you can do to block spells. If they throw a spell at your tower, it's going to hit the tower. There's no counterplay and when there's nothing you can do, it really sucks. This is why I personally think a card like the Monk was a great addition. Counterplay to this oppressive playstyle of cycling spells was long overdue and up to October of 2022, players just had to deal with it. And although Expo does seem to be pretty dead as of November of 2022, and Logbait also seems to be phasing out, you know that one day you are going to face a 2.6 player, a Logbait player, and an Expo player that are very toxic, and you'll be just as frustrated as you once were before. Because no matter how good or bad these decks are in the meta, the core frustration is always there. So one more thing I want to talk about is the skill level of this deck. This seems to be a highly contested topic within the Clash Royale community. On one side, you have people saying there are a lot of micro interactions that require very specific placements and dealing damage to towers is a process that involves knowing when to play certain cards and when to wait. On the other side of the aisle, you have people claiming 2.6 to be nothing but a spam deck, the fact that it's easy to defend pretty much anything if you spam enough cheap cards. As long as you learn the proper placements, which aren't that hard to learn, you can compete well with this deck. I I saw one comment I actually found really insightful that stated how when its best players were on the cutting edge of new interactions and sequences, it easily was one of the most skillful decks in the game, but over time those sequences became much easier to master. I really like this take essentially implying that the skill level of the average player has risen a decent amount since this deck was first introduced. So although the deck took a large amount of skill back in 2017, the skill required to push far with new arising meta decks has generally risen faster than the skill needed to push higher with 2.6. Now, people will point out players like Ayasu and Smirk and say, you're brain dead if you think 2.6 is no skill. Oyasu is so good that he pushes to the top of ladder with 2.6. If it's really no skill, why can't anyone push to his level? And you know what? I will just say now, I don't think any deck requires zero skill. 
Even most players couldn't push anywhere near the top of ladder with, say, an Elixir Golem deck, which is widely considered to be the lowest skilled archetype in Clash Royale, and even if one player can do it, it shows the deck has potential, but any distance between multiple players using that deck showcases an element of advanced play that differentiates the players who make it to the top with it and those who can't make it there. 2.6 has a high skill cap, but I believe every deck is like this to some extent. Saying that 2.6 is the only deck with this kind of potential is just wrong. 2.6 may have required an intense level of skill back in 2017, but in this day and age, that level of skill required to play it is about average. But don't be deceived in thinking that it doesn't mean there isn't a lot of room to improve. I found a 60-page document talking about the ins and outs of this deck, which certainly gives some tips if you really don't plan on going outside. And there are a lot of tutorials out there that can certainly help players improve. So yes, of course Hog 2.6 requires skill to play. It's just not in its own special category like some people suggest. This is just one opinion, though. There is not a strong objective metric to measure how skilled one deck is compared to another. 2.6, an iconic deck that no Clash Royale player will ever forget. Like it or not, it's here to stay. I can respect the high IQ plays that can be pulled off, but I cannot respect the playstyle that drags out games and spell cycling until the very end. Was this a video partly just to vent my frustration against 2.6? Perhaps a little, but I did try to give credit where credit's due and be somewhat objective. There is honestly a lot more I could say about Hog 2.6, and I'm sure people are going to leave heated comments under this video. There are so many more reasons Hog 2.6 is annoying to many people that I didn't even mention, but I tried to compile the main points on each side and and learn the history the best I could for myself to get the best understanding possible. I hope you found this video insightful and opened some people's minds about the complexity yet simplicity of this deck. But let me know what you think about Hog 2.6. Also, let me know what other decks or topics you'd like to see me cover in future videos. Thank you all for watching, and take care.